Hey guys, I'm Dr. Deuce and welcome back. Recently, I was talking to a very talented young producer named John the Dreamer and he was explaining to me why he moved from Logic Pro X to Ableton Live. Now, as I've said before, I'm a long time Logic Pro user and it's very difficult for me to even consider switching to another platform. However, John lent me his laptop for a week with Ableton and I was astounded at the ease of use, the features and the power of that particular DAW. Now I have used Ableton in the past and I found it quite a challenge to overcome the workflow. And I think not just for myself, but for many other users, that is the real stumbling block, not working with the traditional timeline format. Although it is possible to work with arrangement or session view in Ableton, the default position is to work with clips. And that for me was a bit of a challenge. However, once I got past that, and really got my head around how to use that, which didn't take that long to be honest, I was well on my way to creating music and exploring the great features in this door. So the purpose of this particular series is to compare how things are done in both Logic Pro X and Ableton. It's for beginners just like myself using Ableton or for people who are interested in seeing how things are done in Logic Pro. I'll be working on an AB sort of format where I'll do something in Ableton and then do it in Logic or vice versa and show you how things are done on each side of the fence. Hopefully it will be beneficial to you and if it is, do remember to give me a like or subscribe to the channel or even ask a question. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the Ableton screen layout. Um, the most striking thing about it is the color scheme, very bland looking gray color scheme. Um, you can add color to the individual tracks, you sort of color code them there, and to the clips which we'll see later on. The overall theme is pretty drab and bland. In the preferences, you can go in and change the look and feel so if we were to come to skin right here, we can try different skins. This is my preferred skin. Um, I think it's actually pretty cool. And it kind of reminds me a lot of what the logic uh, theme looks and feels like. So that resonates quite well with me. Anyway, that's something that you can change in the preferences. However, the rest of the layout is as follows. Over here, you've got your categories. You can choose from drums and you can see them all lined up here. As you select from the category over here, items stack up. You've got different types of instruments. So, so these would be stock Ableton instruments. So under analog, for example, you can go in there and you've got basses, you've got brass and so on and so forth. Collision and so on, coming down the drum rack. Um, then you've got the sampler, simpler, tension, and you got you can build instrument racks where you combine different instruments together. The stock instruments are pretty decent, but we'll get we'll get to them later on. We've got audio effects as well, which are really, really good. Then you've got MIDI effects, again, similar to Logic. Now you can add more bits by going straight to Ableton and loading those bits up. You can also have your VST and audio units plugins made available uh, in Ableton. I'm working on a Mac, so uh, VST and audio units. And of course, you've got different clips that you can use and samples that you might have access to from your own sample library. You can add additional packs, um, which you can get from Ableton as a bundle and your own user library can be accessed from this place right here. Now down here is really a browser to the sounds that you might have available as well as your project recordings. Now, if I was to click on samples, for example, and type up here, crash, because Ableton will search through um, all of your sample library and find different crashes that are available to you. And you can just click on them and audition them, which is brilliant. Easy browsing access to your samples and audio. That's, that's really a brilliant feature. Um, and down here, you make sure that you've got your audition switch switched on. Down here is your info view, which is again, really handy. So for example, anything that you're hovering over, um, you get some information about it down in the left hand corner. So this will tell you what type of track you're on the title bar and up here, for example. Uh, and it's really, really useful because as you're getting used to Ableton, you're going to need to kind of figure out what certain things are if you're not familiar with it. So 
That's your info window. Now in this space is where you do most of your editing. You can edit audio, MIDI, and plugin parameters in this space. Again, we'll come to that later on. Now over in this space is a fantastic tutorial come information column. Do go through the different topics because it's really brilliant in informing you as to how you can use Ableton Live. Now in the center um, of the screen, of course, you've got your tracks, your MIDI tracks we've got here. We've got two audio tracks and we can create um, more devices or tracks right here. Over here, we've got a couple of auxiliary tracks and our master bus, a master track right here. Now this window is called session view. Over here, we can click on this and switch to arrangement view. And this is the sort of more typical timeline based um, recording format. So if I was to click play there, you can see the playhead moving across the screen from left to right. Whereas in um, this view, which is the session view, is quite different to the way you probably operate in your digital audio workstation. Now to close this window, I just need to click on that to give us a bit more space. And I'm gonna close this one right here by clicking this button right here. And we're gonna close this one down here by clicking this button right here. Okay, now one of the obstacles that I think many people find when exploring Ableton Live, myself included, was the workflow. The first thing you see when you open up um, Ableton by default is the session view screen. And you think to yourself, well, what's going on here? How do I make music? We're so accustomed to the timeline based workflow, which of course you can do over here in arrangement view. Of course, my intention is to demystify the whole process of how to use this. And it is really, really simple. Um, which I'll be showing you shortly. Up here, we've got some more tabs and buttons, and many of them are self-explanatory. For example, you can set your tempo here. Over here, you can set your tap tempo. Um, here's your metronome and your counting. Um, here are your transport controls, automation, and um, loop controls, and so on. Um, again, I mean, some of these things, in fact, I haven't really used much myself because Ableton is new to me also. And um, by doing this series, I'm going to be discovering a lot myself. Now let's switch over to having a quick look at the Logic screen layout so we can sort of compare and contrast between the two. Okay, so we've had a look at the Ableton screen layout. Now it's time to have a look at Logic's screen layout. Now Logic subscribes to the traditional uh, timeline-based um, operation where the playhead moves from left to right and your recordings appear on the screen in that sort of linear fashion. Let's start over here. Um, right here, we've got our sound selection library, and this is for software instruments. So right here, we've got a software instrument track, which um, is an extra electric piano. Now we can choose different electric piano tones or sounds um, right here. If we were to reset the channel strip, we will then have our full library um, of different types of sounds. So bass, for example, you can go in and choose different types of bass guitars, for example. That's the library switch at the top here. And we can scroll back to the main category list. So this is where you select sounds. The next section right here at the top up here is where once you've created um, a recording, a region, this is where you can adjust parameters for that specific region, not for the whole track, but just for that block of recording. If you wanna adjust parameters for everything sitting on this whole track going along, then you can make that adjustment here. And then of course you've got right here is the channel strip for the track that's been selected. So this is where you add your plugins, audio effects plugins, as well as your MIDI plugins, and you've got your channel fader and so on. Now this right here is your main stereo output channel strip. You can add audio effects here as well to process the overall mix. Now over here is where you've got your loop selection browser. So um, that's it right there, we're switched on. Um, and you just select a loop, for example. And that's all great and easily accessible. You can uh, choose loops based on genre um, or the instrument type or different types of descriptors. Okay, that's stuff that we'll deal with later on. 
And up here we've got some more switches. This is your audio recording bin where everything you record in terms of audio will end up in here, part of your project. So let's close that just to give ourselves a bit more screen space. And this here is the main window where all of your recordings will take place. You can create, for example, a new track. Let's create a new audio track. And so you've got a software instrument track right here, and this is an audio track, and everything will appear on the screen going that way. Um, at the top, we've got some more buttons. Um, these six switch things on and off, like the library. We've also got the inspector, which switches the channel strips on and off. Um, you've also got um, this toolbar right here, which gives you a whole uh, range of other options, which again, we'll look at later on. This here is the smart control um, for any track that's been selected. Now, there are no plugins on this new audio track, but because there's plugins on this one, um, you can have quick access to the plugins that are on this channel strip. Okay, and this here is switches your editor screens on and off. Here's your transport controls. Here you can set your tempo, your playhead position. Here's your SMPTE time um, playback position. Over here you've got some more buttons like um, solo, uh, you count in, metronome and so on. Again, um, we'll look at that in more detail. There are a lot more uh, drop down menus like along at the top and along here. Now, one other comparison that must be made clear is with Ableton, there are essentially just two screens. You've got session view and arrangement view. However, with Logic, there are a number of different screens that you can open up. For example, you can open up score editor, which you can push to full screen. You can also open up um, the mixer window, which again can be full screen. These are some of the slight differences between the two applications in terms of layout. So that's a quick overview of the screen layout for the two applications. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you found this useful. Let's move on to the next phase where we start creating some music.